So welcome back, everybody. Apologies um, on behalf of GSE UK region if you were having difficulties with the website. We did have a, uh, an issue earlier on, as pointed out, just before the last session ended, um, but that's all fixed now. So if you were struggling to give the feedback from the previous session, um, you should now be able uh, to do that. Uh, so if you're on the security stream or any the other streams, um, that's, uh, that's now available to you. So it gives me pleasure to welcome back, I have to get the name correct, the surname Christian Karachi. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> who is by no means a stranger to the security working group. Um, for those of you that have been joining our working group meetings and the, the conference from last year and the conference before that, Christian was uh, uh, on our stream giving presentation around uh, digital forensics. So he's back with us today. Um, uh, with some more, I'm sure, scary stories. Definitely. Um, yes. Um, but for the purpose of the uh, feedback, this is uh, session 1AC. And uh, so don't forget to, uh, to uh, post your feedback at the end of this session. Um, and also don't forget our charity. I'm sure Christian will uh, mention that. What I was trying to say at the uh, from the previous session is that um, you can go on to the conference website under the agenda and click on the link. You'll see the link there for the Virgin Money Giving to donate. And also, if you want, when you give feedback, if you click on the agenda, for example, Christian session, right down the bottom, um, you'll see the link to uh, to give your your feedback for his session. So without further ado, Christian, uh, it's over to you. Uh, by the way, if you want to pose questions, um, do so in the chat. Uh, also, you can unmute your line. We've enabled that. We've enabled yeah, that feature. So Christian's very open to que questions throughout. So without further ado, Christian, Mr. Karachi, over to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jamie. Hello, everybody, wherever you are in the world. Well, welcome to another episode of my digital forensic saga, Hiding Among Bits. Uh, I've changed the title again for the third time because I'm feeling that this title is more appropriate with the content that I'm presenting. So we will start with the charity, with the, this year's charity. So please donate if you want, if you can. Uh, so let's get us started. So what is a digital forensic investigation? The best definition that I found around is the gathering analysis of digital information in an authentic, accurate, and complete form for presentation as evidence in a civil proceedings or a court of law. Now, this digital forensic and electronic discovery process includes information developed from documents, communications, like text messages or emails, uh, databases and proprietary applications or and or data. Uh, where is it used? In today's world, we are faced with myriad of investigations which might be considered as criminal in nature, such as identity theft, uh, telecommunications fraud, uh, cell phone abuse, online auction fraud like eBay or Amazon, trafficking in contraband like child porn, network intrusions that have uh, that result in resource damages and obviously data loss, cyber threats, email harassment and ransomware, and pirating of intellectual property. Now, <laughs> How can you lose your intellectual property, that bit of that very precious, precious data to you? You can lose them through espionage, external hacks, as I said earlier. Human negligence, someone clicks a link that they shouldn't and leaks fueled by insiders. Now, uh, I am pressing very much on this uh, insider thing because as the solar winds hack two years ago demonstrated us, there are two very important lessons to learn. First, 
blockchain is not at all as secure as it should be. And secondly, most of the security people are more or less unaware or unprepared for this type of, of uh, data loss. And I will show you very shortly why. So when it comes to insider, we do have three types, mainly three types. The inadvertent one, uh, who is an employee contractor or business partner who has access to an organization's network systems or data. Now they have little or no security training or awareness and they cause harm without malicious intent. As I said, they click that link on the email and boom, malware is there. There is the negligent one. This type has cybersecurity training and awareness, but is overconfident as, ah, it won't happen to me. Don't worry, nobody's perfect. And they cause harm by making errors or disregarding organization's policies. And the third type, the most dangerous one is the malicious type. They can be a whistleblower or they can be a disgruntled employee or they can be a job lever. And they cause harm, intentional harm to the organization. Now, when it comes to leaking uh, this information, there are quite a few methods, but two of my favorite and not only mine, <laughs> unfortunately, are this base 64 encoding, which is around since for more or less first uh, email message has appeared. And as I said, it has been used to encode binary data in email messages where the email server might modify line endings in terms of when you're uh, writing an email and you press the enter key, the code for that BR return, it's 10. On the, in the old days, uh, some of the interpreters or some of the message results misinterpreted that as the binaries one and zero. And from here, all sort of nasty things develop. Nowadays, it is used in digital certificates or to embed image data directly into the HTML source code or email body. So let's it is most suitable for small amounts of data, but it is not, and I will show you why. So let's have a little bit of fun. Here we go. Hopefully, yeah, it, it works. Okie dokie. A bit slow, unfortunately, but this is Windows 10. I cannot say more. Maybe you should upgrade to Windows 11, Christian. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, no, I should downgrade to Windows 7. At least it works <laughs> properly. Right. So here we go. As I said, for small amounts of data, but it's not exactly, uh, exactly accurate. So let's go here and uh, we'll use some dummy data as usual. Uh, we will take let's two, four, six, let's say these eight pictures. And we will create an archive. Add to photos zip. And that should be, nope. Nope. Where is it? Ah. Again, right. Let's try this again. Uh, 
let's do it like this and we specify a path. Uh, we'll go for documents. Open. Zip archive. Okay. So here it is, 3.3 megabytes. Now this by all means is quite thick if you want. So what we can do with it, let's encode it. So if we go here, I need to move this because I have JavaScript blockers here, which will not allow this page to do its job. Okay, good. Now, we go for the encode part of it. And we will upload the file. The locations, computer, mom, Wayne, Christian, multimedia, photos. And it should be here somewhere. Oops. Oh, there it is. And we open it and we encode it. So the file is here, let's encode it. So okay, it shouldn't take long, yes. Okay, click or tap here to download your file. Let's save it. And we will save it again in on downloads here, save. So let's have a look at it. Here it is. And because it's quite slow, I don't, uh, I, I know why, but hopefully it will work eventually. Ah, I need a new machine, definitely. Or a new internet connection, one of them. That, so as you can see, it's an entire zip file and it goes on mil thousands of pages, millions of characters. Okay, we will close it now. We'll close this one. Harry, I still hope you want to help me. So what do we do now is, open a document and we will open a PDF this one technically you don't need Adobe Reader or Adobe itself to edit a PDF file, Word will do. So we open it with 
word Obviously, it should tell you that we'll convert to a double. It shouldn't take long. It doesn't. And now when you save it, you can save it as a docx, as a docx, sorry, as a Word document. Okay, so now we save it here. And we play with it just a little bit. Let's see if it has been saved. Yes, it has been saved. Okay, so we close this one. We don't need it anymore. And we open this one, but how do we open it? We open it as an archive so we extract the files here and then in the word subdirectory we have a media subdirectory this media subdirectory contains all the images that are inside the word document now what we can do here is oh, okay never mind uh, what we can do here we can take this one the zip one copy and we stuff it in the media okay So this document originally has 531 kilobytes. Now look at this. We archive it back to zip. We delete this, we don't need them. We change the file extension to docx yes i do want to change it and we open it found unreadable do you want to recover yes i do want to recover standard message as you can see it's the same the same thing but this time is 3.8 megabytes. What do we do now? We copy this. Uh, let's put it here, it's easier to find it. So, Henry, I hope you're ready. Okay, and we email it. Henry Kuiper, subject, please see attached uh, from Luton with love, add attachment, other locations, computer, Windows, downloads, open, send now harry i know you're running all sort of security software can you please just analyze this but just ignore the fact that i stuffed everything in so what i would like to know is if your security software is 
telling you that there is hidden content there, something that it shouldn't be in there. So probably Jamie will unmute your line after you do this. Hopefully the mail will be with you soon. Okay, and we will move forward. Uh, we don't need this anymore. Right. Again, so now how, how this base 64 encoding works, I showed you. You can send this again, as I said, as an attachment. Oh, Henry, you're there? Yes, I'm here, but there is no mail coming in yet. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. hopefully it will work. Well, you did say, Henry, that you got your anti-malware filters activated. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I enabled some extra ones uh, just to be sure, because you're never too sure with Christian, right? <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we'll be there very soon. And that is the zip archive. Okay. On the same note, I can paste in that... Um, base 64 and now i will show you the reverse process hang on a second it should be let's stop downloads oh here it is so the reverse process is like this Okay, so the code from base 64, we select this file. And we decode it. Again, it shouldn't take long. Okay, we save the file. As you can see, it's a decoded, decoded zip. And we go here, open with uh, extract here. And as you can see, all the images there. Now, think for a second and let's assume these images are your blueprints for whatever you're researching. Quite a nasty surprise, isn't it? If you think that you're protected by the corporate restrictions to email size, you're not. Because what I can do is... Christian? Yes? Henry's asking if you've got the right address. Uh, well, hang on a second. Uh, Harry, can you see my screen? Yes, you can. Is this yeah. one? Yep, so that's all right. Nothing has arrived yet, just so you know. I'm okay, wondering huh? maybe you've got like, um, like this auto reply saying your evil mail is not accepted here, which would be cool for me, not for you. Uh, well, hang on a second, send. Let's have a look. It has been sent to you, as you can see. Yeah, understood. Do you have any uh, any sort of filters in terms of of uh, uh, it, mail it size? It just popped in. Please see attached. Okay, dokie. So, so you want me to open this Word document then? Yes, and just tell me if any of your protections are saying anything. So just. Uh, Pretend that you didn't see what I've put in there. Yeah. Well, if I open it in my mail client, which is, um, well, this is too much information, but which is Gmail. Yeah. It just opens it in like the Gmail preview and your document opens a okay. Okay. I am now with fearing of my own life downloading it. 
to my machine and then opening it locally with Word. Just for the viewers, don't try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I get, I get a warning that says the open XML file document cannot be opened because right. there are problems with the contents or the file name might contain invalid characters, for example, backslash forward slash details. The file is corrupt and cannot be opened. Right. Okay. Now, down then under... I get the warning. It's unreadable. Do you want to recover? Yes. And then I get an, a Microsoft question. If you trust the source of this document, yes, recover it. So I will press yes here. And then it opens in words the same way as well. So it opens as a uh, as an IBM Red file, yeah, a Red yes. book. Sorry, splendid. Yes, correct. Now close it and anywhere you want, right click on it and say extract here. Let's see if that works. I, then I do don't save, right? Uh, I'll go to my downloads. Wherever you want. Open with hmm, probably archive manager. I don't have an archive manager here, but probably what you want to show is when I open it, extract it, I can get that exactly data out again. Yeah. Yeah. Because exactly. it's nearly four megabytes here indeed. So it does have your, it still has your, I would say, payload in it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I hope there are decent pictures and it won't get me into trouble having this on my computer. No, there, there are some pictures that I use on my presentations, so don't worry. Everything is free, uh, open source. <laughs> nothing, nothing nasty there. So it looks, for me, as you can see, looks like this extract here but i don't know what you're using there so if you go into the word subdirectory after you extracted it and in media you should have the photos.zip which you can further extract wherever yep i, I can confirm that okay so as I said, as an unaware user or as an aware user, none of your protections said anything. Am I right? Uh, yes. Okay, imagine for a second this would be weaponized with some sort of malware or ransomware specifically designed for your organization. So not the thing that's on the internet and your, uh, and your antivirus or, or DLP or IDS IPS solution can, can detect something specially crafted for you. What do you say about this? Are you scared? Well, I, I think... Outside of this session, I would like to send for you to send me some real evil content because I do hope that um, like virus scanners and the malware stuff that runs on my trusty Mac OS will then pick up on the content because now it's benign content. Um, it, it is something I'm very curious to see happening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you have my participation on this. Uh, hopefully, I won't destroy anything in your, on your machine. So, I don't know. This is what I wanted to demonstrate to you. So, let's, let's go back a little bit to the base64 encoding. And as I said, if you think that you're protected by the corporate uh, limits on email size, you are not. Mm -hmm. And I will show you. Show you very quickly why um, come on let's open this again
and select up to here. Create a new document. Paste it and save it. Let's say untitled one, it's okay, save. What I want to show you is the size. Come on, where about are you hidden again? Uh, still working, okay. Uh, as I said, I need a new machine. Right, the size is 12.5 kilobytes. So this can be pasted as I demonstrated earlier in, in my other presentations. I won't go over this again. This can be hidden in the body of the email, which usually is not read or is not displayed by your email client. And being only 12.5 kilobytes, you can say this is, uh, let's rename it as uh, part one. So all this content, Let's see if I still have my, my olds here and I will do it very quickly. Is the forensics uh, security working group? Uh, nope, unfortunately. Uh, demos. So here we go. Okay, base 64. Yes, right, okay. So what happens here, let's edit this. Open. So display it. Uh, preferably today, everybody's waiting. Come on. It's 110 kilobytes because it does have some old content in it <laughs> from my previous demo. Let's see with the text editor. Maybe it's faster. No, it is not. Faster with this. Okie dokie. So we have here, as you can see, base 64. So we go and delete all this thing here. Oops, too much. Up to here. We delete everything and we say here part one. And then we go back to uh, where about are you here? We take all this in, copy. And we go here and paste it. Oops. Ah, okay, never mind. Save it. As whatever it is, we don't need this anymore. Hmm. 
four squared. Right, we don't need this, we don't need this. Open with text editor, hopefully it works faster. Yes, as you can see here, we do have this part one base 64 here. Okay, now, if we open it with Thunderbird, which is my email client. Okay. I don't know what this Optimus GIF, whatever. Hang on a second. More. View source. I don't know where that Optimus appeared here. Oh, from here. Right. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Let's redo this. This was some content I played with. Okay, so we leave this here and from here we take out this up to here okie dokie right again we save it And we open it with Thunderbird. Yes, that's it. So as you can see, nothing gives it away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we are looking at the source, We see the base 64 there. Now, Harry, sorry, but today you are my guinea pig. Uh, hang on a second. Let's modify this. Uh, K to Hen oops. Henry, I can't remember. Uh, address book. Here we go. Uh, Henry Clippers the DevOps. Okay. Henry. Creeper at zdevops.com, I think. Let me check again. That's correct, uh, Christian. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, so we don't need this. We save this. We close it. We close it again. Open with other application. Thunderbird, okay. Harry Kuiper, okay, let's find send file. And it message. Forward. Let's forward it to send. Can you please tell me now if you see any nasties inside there? 
no opens as a regular file right in again this is in gmail yeah i can probably say show original this is nice all the signatures and i don't know what you want me to uh, say or show but there's i see look, nothing funky okay look for the view source do you have a view source there can you see the source the actual source as as yes. i press yeah okay can you see the part one base 64 part one there mm, 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 mm. let's see it's in the header in the header of the email nope nope i do get a multi-part boundary and then your text encoding it's and it should be underneath mime version one zero base 64 part one and some funky characters nope nope but maybe okay. gmail filtered that out right yeah but the thing is what i wanted to demonstrate is it went away, it's 1.5 kilobytes in size. It can be increased, obviously, up to 50 or 100, whatever your limit is there, and then sent as multiple emails. What the other side can do is take these emails, put them together, part one, part two, part three, part whatever, and you do have, again, that archive, which you decoded online for free, as I encoded it and decoded it online and I showed you. And you have your secrets gone. The third yeah. party has your secrets. Any questions so far? Uh, nothing from this side, Christian. Okay, let's move forward. If you're not scared enough, file, embe file embedding. A very dangerous method that allows one, that being me, the insider, to leak huge amounts of data in apparently inoffensive files. The techniques obviously consist of embedding a file into another one. The resulting file is not giving away the hidden content, and but requires advanced knowledge about properties of different file types. So, as I demonstrated earlier, mm -hmm. Harry received an apparently inoffensive file with hidden content with a zip archives with a zip archive inside, and nothing popped up to say there is something fishy inside there. Right, let's try something different now. Uh, so, file embedding. For the purpose of the further demo of the next demonstration, we will use Excel because Excel has some funny things in it. I hope IBM doesn't mind that I used one of them, of their red books for this demonstration. Ah. Oh has to be Windows 10 as usual. Uh, don't save. Good. Right. Excel. We open a blank workbook. <laughs> And we add, let's say, two more sheets, OK? Now, sheet two will insert 
an image. Let's go on my favorite. Let's insert the first one. You should have this on your zip archive, Henry. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> so as you see, it's nothing fishy or <laughs> inappropriate. And here we'll insert another picture. Uh, let's say this angel here. Okay. Now, Microsoft allowed Excel a very nasty, I may say, a very nasty setting. That is, a sheet can be visible, can be hidden, or can be very hidden. What is the difference? The difference is that if we hide the third sheet as well, if we try to unhide, we cannot unhide sheet two normally. Now we'll go a step further and we will protect this thing, protect workbook. We will protect the structure with a password. Uh, at some point. And we save it. All right. In GSE 2021, that's okay. Save. Seriously? What's wrong? Oh, okay. Don't want like this. Let's do it like this. Digital forensics. GSE conference 2021. Oh, it's already here. That's why. Okay, dokie. Let's say book one one and save it. There we go. Okay. Uh, so we go here. Digital forensics. Jesse Conference 2021, book 11. Here it is. As you can see, now being protected, you can't do anything, unhide or anything. So you cannot unhide it. Okay, what are your options? How do you know there is something nasty in it? Well, it does have some sort of size. Okay, let's delete everything from here. We don't need this too. Yes. The workaround is very easy if you want. 7-zip. Oh, by the way, if you don't have 7-zip, what you can do is change the extension to zip. And then you will be able to extract it. Extract all. As you can see, you don't need. OK, we extract them here. Uh, just to let you know, Christian, you've got less than 10 minutes. Oh, yes. already? Yes. Jeez. Time goes so Sorry quickly. about that. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> got nine, nine minutes. Okay. We'll no delete this one. So, yes, no pressure, obviously. And now, if we go to 
oh, sorry, not here, to Excel subdirectory. We do have workbook XML. And if we open this, yeah, obviously we open it with Internet Explorer, so it's not good. But what, oh, come on. I don't, I'm not downloading enough anything. Close all tabs, please. Uh, come on, faster, yeah. Um, let's open it with WordPad. Uh, now I don't want to browse anything. Just leave me alone, please. That's why I love Windows, not. Right, so. If we go here, you can see we have sheet name sheet two sheet ID to state very hidden. So you select this state very hidden up to this R ID and delete it. And then you go further to sheet three, sheet ID is three, state hidden. Again, you select all of this up to R. Technically you delete the state. You save the file. Hopefully it has been saved. Not, oh yes. Oh. Come on. Close window, please. And now you repack everything. Uh, seven zip, add to book 11 zip. Here it is. We delete this, we don't need them. Yes. We rename this as, well, change the extension, sorry. XLSX. Yes. And there it is. Shit to with the image, sheet three with the image. As you remember, this was password protected, useless. Do you have any questions? Uh, there's no questions in the chat. I don't know if anybody, you can unmute your line folks if you want to ask Christian a question. Looks like everybody's scared. <laughs> yes. Well, it's pretty scary. It's not the end yet, because we have the sessions feedback. And if Jamie agrees, I can still wait a few minutes for you to ask your questions if you have them. Yep, any questions? What I will say is, uh, okay, uh, question for you there, Christian from Raphael. Can you say, so he says basically, if a file is embedded in a document, does it automatically get executed when the document is opened? Well, depends what type of file it is. I embedded a, an archive, a zip archive, just not to be dangerous. But yes, it can be automatically executed. You can embed all sorts of nasties there. And using, uh, using link and the hyperlink uh, connectivity of, of uh, Word, you can do mostly whatever you want to. So yes, I can weaponize a file, send it to you, and you'll have no idea. 
as I, as I demonstrated already. Anything else? Any other questions? I think it's safe to say, Mrs. Parsons, that we'll be checking all email going forward that comes from Christian. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, you can check it, but uh, I can hide it. Yes. Even further. As, as Mark said once, I do have a warped mind. Yes, I do have it, and it's, but it's not warped enough to show you really sensitive stuff on an online session when everybody's recording and everybody can access it after it. When we meet in person, I will demonstrate you further. <laughs> More scary content, even scarier than this one, if you want. I mean, is there anything that we can do to sort of pick up on this? Any, any, any of the security vendors out there? Uh, just... from, from what I am aware, no. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately. There's a comforting thought. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, usually these uh, this, uh, attacks or, and this mal malware and this uh, ransomware goes with uh, code downloaded from the internet or used by some other hackers in, uh, in old attacks or in different attacks. Mm -hmm. What they tend to do is to copy that code and embed it in their files. And obviously it gets picked up by uh, antivirus on a ISP, uh, DSP solution or, or DLP solution because it's known, it's on the internet. But if I specially craft something for your organization or your email address, it's undetectable because it's not on the internet, it's not in the database of your antivirus or ISP, DSP. And it's end of game over. Okay. Right. Well, we're right at the top of the hour, um, Christian. Thank you so much for uh, for scaring us again and uh, taking uh, the time to uh, come and uh, present to us again. Um, thank like you. Said, thank you for having me and inviting me. Yeah, no me problem. Again. And just check your email, everybody, when it comes to Christian. <laughs> <laughs> if you can find it, good luck with that. Um, right. So yeah, this is session one AC for the purpose of feedback. Don't forget feedback equals CPE points and prizes potentially for you. So do take the time to do that. Now the, uh, the website is back up again. Um, yes, I would, I would like and really honest feedback. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Especially if you are, if everybody's comfortable with going this up, with upping the game, if you want. So showing you even more Indeed. scary things but only when we meet in person. Otherwise, <laughs> for as long as we are online, I will stick to this mild content. Let's say sugarcoated somehow. So there's an incentive to come back to Whittlebury Hall when we uh, do meet in person again. Uh, yeah. So we are going back to Whittlebury. We're not going to, to Wales. Well, yeah, up for, I think it's going to be Whittlebury. Yeah, that's certainly the uh, consensus at the moment. But, uh, you know, anything can change. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have a, a, an in-person meeting next year. Yes, indeed. Right, so that's the end of uh, Christian's session. At one o'clock, uh, as the time is now, we've got the Lunch and Learn, um, which is with Microfocus. And this is the Do You Really Understand Mainframe Modernization? So uh, if you want to grab your lunch and join that. For the security stream, we will be back at two o'clock um, with Mark Nelson. He's going to be uh, talking us through what's new in, uh, in, in RACF, because of course we've got ZOS 2.5 now. That means a new release of RACF. So hopefully you can join us for that. And yeah, enjoy your lunch and uh, we'll see you later on in the, uh, in the day. Thank you. Thanks once again, Christian. Okay, thank you. See you later. Bye. Thanks. Bye.